Um, again, power. Okay, we're good, Veronica. Now. <laughs> Call tonight's planning board meeting to order for the town of Pompey. Uh, today's December 20th, 2021. Um, I guess we could start with a Pledge of Allegiance. Um, hopefully, somebody's got a flag somewhere. So, <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God and the Okay, uh, minutes from last month's meeting have been drafted. There's been a couple of revisions to them I know that came out. Um, if there are no other revisions, so I have a motion to approve as um, presented. I'll second it. Or first slip, whatever. <laughs> Hall second. Okay, Roy with a first, Kevin with a second. All in favor? Uh, I guess Aye. 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 Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we will go first on our agenda tonight is the Homer subdivision. And Public, well, we'll bring it up to date here first. Uh, it's two lot subdivision on 4253 Orange Delphi Road, parcel number 005.01-17.0. And we have Mr. Comar and Carol, Ms. O'Leary with us also representing. So, um, Planning board members, everybody got a copy of the map to review, I'm assuming. Uh, it was sent out Carol. via PDF again. Carol. Yes. Uh, okay, Steve, you had a chance to go I'll over the map. Did, yep. And for the most part, started. everything has been addressed. Um, Although there is one or two federal wetlands that were not shown on this plan. And I can point those out if you'd like. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. No. He's trying to show us the wetlands. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So these, this is the subdivision map right here. So if we look at lot one and lot two, um, here's Limestone Creek. Mm -hmm. There is a, a federal wetland down here that's shown. There's also a state wetland here that's shown along with the 100 foot buffer. So that's good. But there's also a wetland in this area and a strip that runs through lot two off the property. And I'll point it out on this other plan. Okay. So this is, so it's right here. So it's just north of where the creek turns. And then there's a strip right here. Okay. Now that's the parcel that Arnie is going to keep. Correct. The parcel that um, is lot one would be the one that he wants to subdivide is the one he wants to, you know, separate from his land. Yeah. So I am just pointing it out to the board mm -hmm. um, just for their information, just to. Okay. That that's really the only comment that I had on the plan itself. It looks like everything else has pretty much been addressed. So. It, it was it was subdivided. The boundaries were drawn so that we didn't have to deal with us wetland or DEC stuff with the parcel that he wanted to break off. That's why it, that's why it, it, we wanted to go all the way back, but that wasn't an option because of the bridge. Gotcha. So lot one, that the boundary is going to be along the creek. Is that correct? What you're proposing? Okay. So Steve, should that be clear? 
that rear line? Um, because where is the rear line yeah. for what? I, then? Not really yeah, it's not that clear, really. <laughs> Um, I thought there was a note here. Let's see. I'm sure there has to be some type of DEC easement that goes along with that um, shore. Okay, so they're showing this center line along the creek as the boundary. So that's right here. But is that is that the existing boundary or is that the boundary? Yeah, that's yeah, that's your existing boundary. Okay. Although it's not really, it's still really not shown here for lot one. <laughs> it looks so. like it looks like Gary just did a straight diagonal line. Top of the bank, but he's calling it a tie line. I don't I don't know what that means. Top I'm bank. guessing, I'm guessing that's, that's not a property line. I think that's just what he's using for calculations. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, the tie lines, yeah, because this is still the center line. So, yeah, I guess it's still not clear after lot one where the property line is here then. Well, what about, what about lot two also, Steve? Yeah, yeah. So lot two, I think, is the, the remainder of the lot. Yeah, so if, I just think if this boundary was shown, then lot two would just be the balance. Maybe is that correct, Carol? Um, yeah, the lot the, two would be the larger. The, the, the creek behind lot two is still all of Arnie's property beyond it, so there's no boundary there. And then okay. there's okay. no existing boundary on lot one because it's right now it's part of Arnie's land. So it, once I, I believe once this is approved, then they they'll probably have to add a line down the middle um, to the bridge. Yeah, well, that's what's that's what should be shown on this map. Well, there's no, but there's no boundary because it hasn't been subdivided yet. Well, you're proposing a subdivision, and so it has to show the line that you're proposing. Right. Okay. Well, that. That's a question for Gary. Yeah. I have to ask him. Um, unless he yes. left it blank, waiting to hear from, you know, was it SACPA to see what they were going to impose? It might be a boundary that's determined by the DEC or the county or the state. I think Gary, I think you can determine the boundary. Yeah, I don't I don't think they'll they'll have the, they'll have any guidance on that really. I, I don't think. Okay, I, what I, is, I didn't. what's the what is the where do you want the line to be? Uh, the the line was just basically when we talked to Gary, it was just gonna be the shore of the creek. Well, if you're consistent with your neighbors, it'd be the center of the creek, it looks like, but that that was never brought up to us. Gary really doesn't talk to us. He just, we just sent him the information and he goes, okay. And I mean, I'm figuring he's the expert. Um, and since right now it's, there's no existing boundary. He just went with it. I mean, I had drawn the boundary when I had talked to him right at the shore, because I was unaware of a boundary being down the middle of the creek. <clears throat> And I, I think well, it's down the middle of the creek for the people that live behind that property, like on the different lot there. So if like, this is the tax map right here, right, generally showing the boundary that follows the creek. I mean, Correct. it's you know, it, but it's Arnie closer. owns all of that land beyond beyond the creek. Yeah, over here. Right. So there's no right. boundary down the middle of the creek because he already owns it. Well, the other property, well, there is along this area because that's your property line. That's the property, the property line. line for other people. Well, that's your property line too. A shared line. This, this is a shared line. Line. No, but Arnie owns the property beyond the creek. Beyond the creek. You're saying oh, right. over here? I, I, need, I don't understand what you mean. 
Ernie? I, I don't think she's understanding what you're saying, Steve. Okay, see, Ernie's property goes beyond, Ernie, am I correct? Your property goes beyond the I creek. I think it goes a good several, three to five acres beyond the creek. Um, that would be, I guess, south of my house. And then, um, and then the other major 60 acres goes, uh, what's that, west, I believe, <clears throat> uh, all beyond the creek. I mean, um, I, I thought we sectioned off, what was it, like five point some six acres or whatever it is off yeah, the front. It was about that, five acres, yeah. Yeah, that, that borders Orange Delphi Road because, uh, I mean, that's, if uh, somebody wants to buy it, that's the buildable area anyway. Right. Um, we need to the understand. Other, the other properties, the other properties that border the creek they have the boundary down the middle because there's another property owner on the other side of the creek, which right. is Arnie. <laughs> right, that's me. So right. How, how can, can we make well, it? Well, not, not in this area, it's not. Once you get up here, these are all different owners. Those are owners on the, the right side of the creek. Right. On the left in side of the area, creek, that's Arnie. In this area, side. it's the same owner. That's Arnie. In this area, it's the same owner. Yes, that's me. Right, right. Where does lot one stop? We don't know where lot, lot one starts. And we don't know where it, 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 I, it just goes I, to here and stops. I, thought, here I stops. thought he, I, excuse me, I thought he put the footage down from Orange Delphi Road, how much footage basically goes from Orange Delphi Road back towards the creek. I don't know whether the line is right on the creek line well, or it's just yeah, before it's, it. It's probably this line. He Correct. gets, to, they get to this point and then we get to this point, but where does it follow? Does it follow along the bank? It's not clear where it, where, where this property well, once, line is. Once it's subdivided, it should go down the now, middle of the creek. It has if, to be on this plan, though. We, we need to know where it is to subdivide it. Carol, what you... We need to know what you're proposing to do. Where's that line going to go? Give it to us. This is our, your proposal. Yeah, you're I'll have proposal. to, I'll have to confer with, we'll have, Arnie and I, myself, will have to confer with Gary and ask him why he didn't put the line in down the middle of the creek. I mean, I didn't know about the boundary being in the middle of the creek. So when we had talked to him, he never brought it up. And we just figured the simplest thing to do since the person's not gonna have access to the bridge or use of the land behind the creek was just to make the creek the boundary. But if, the, but if for some reason it's grandfathered in that the boundary needs to be the middle of the creek, then uh, I, I, is there like an ordinance or where it's, would I? It would probably be better if it was the center of the creek, because the center of the creek is probably not going to change much. No, but my understanding the bank is change. My understanding was there it was a wetland issue, and the line, the border was supposed to be from Orange Delphi Road up until <laughs> you hit that that wetland border line, so that we wouldn't deal with wetland issues. So it was the footage. From Orin Delphi Road up until you hit the wetland line. That's, and that's, that's what all fine. We, we just need to see it on the plan. That's all. Oh, okay. All right. So it's the top of the bank is where the. Just before where... the creek is the wetland uh, border, where beyond that is wetland, can, uh, I guess considered wetland. So it was the, the line was supposed to go from Orange Delphi Road up until that point. And that point was supposed to be uh, altogether about 5.6 or something acres. 5.8 acres. Uh, uh, 5.8 acres. So that's from Orange Delphi Road up to the, my understanding was the wetland line. And that's what was getting sectioned off. So it looks to me like, I don't know if the board can see this, but this is lot one equals A dash B dash C dash D dash A. So they're saying that he's saying that it goes like this. Okay. Oh, okay. So then the then the boundary so won't be through the they're middle. They're saying of the, the top of bank is the line then. Okay. So Arnie's going to have control of the creek. This land goes to the creek, but not inside. It does not include the creek. Right. Correct. So, so you this think this top of bank line right here should be the property line? Yes. And, and that is what Gary's saying on this map. It, yeah, it that's really what this should, is saying right here. Yeah, it should be a solid line. And sorry, we just got this, so yeah. we're, we're talking through it. Well, well it doesn't look like the other property lines, right? Yeah. 
it probably should. It should look like this line. It should be a solid line, right? Yeah. Where he's got that tie yeah. line. Yeah, because it's it's not clear like this. Okay. Like so we need this, a I think the property line, line is here, not this line. Right? So this tie line here is not the property line. It's the center line of the creek here. Uh -huh. So but he gave us it, but he's not including the creek. Arnie yeah. is keeping the creek. Right, for lot one. Arnie well, is keeping the creek in lot, lot two. two. Lot Arnie two. in lot two. Right. Yes. So lot, lot two. two will include the creek. Lot one does not include the creek. Right. So what needs to happen is he, they need, he needs to update this line so it looks like a property line. Okay. So update C to be yeah. property line. So it's clear. Yep. Yep. Here's the, here's a question. You know, if I, I understand because he says lot one is A, B, C, D, A. I understand what that is. It's clear what it's supposed to be. If you want to continue with this, if this board wants to do an approval contingent upon basically as an administrative matter, that line being put in, that uh, would be up to the chair and the board. I think one of the issues that Steve's bringing up, though, is that that line doesn't exclude the uh, the wetlands, because I think in his other drawing, I think he showed that some of that would still be on his property. No, the wetlands are on the other side of the limestone. If he wants to go back to that screen, it, 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 the line was put there because we're not including it because of the wetland. Yeah, the, the other wetland that I saw was it's up in this area, so it'd be on lot two. Okay. Yeah. I I just I thought that it went inside there a little bit because I thought it was a little bit west of the, or well, <laughs> I'm not sure which direction it is there, but. Can you so pull that you map see, back up? Bridge? Do you see the bridge? Yeah. Okay. That's Arnie's property, the bridge. Yep. Yep. And then the wetland is the the, the elbow above the bridge. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all the and other it, wetlands are to the left of Limestone Creek. Yeah. And if you're truly going to the top of the bank, then once you once you go down the bank, now you're going to be into potential wetland. Right. Correct. Which would be on lot two, not on lot one. So. So there is no inclusion of the creek on this property. Line. Correct. Because otherwise we'd be getting into wetland. Okay. Do you have the what the wetland map? Could you pull that up again easily? Yep. Okay. So where you see the peace sign. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I see. That's okay. that's the peace sign. Arnie, correct me if I'm wrong. The peace sign is part is going to be um, part of the lot. The land that, that we're selling. Correct. <laughs> and it goes back to the creek where you see the little dots. So that that square from the right side of the creek to the peace sign is going to be the proposed subdivision. So if the, if the lot line B to, B to C is drawn diagonally on the, right side of the, on the right side of the creek, it's not, that wetland is not included in this parcel. Right. Because to the, if you look at the peace sign and you go to the top, you see some buildings there and a barn, um, that's Arnie's property that he's keeping. Steve, what does that mean? or anybody that, because all the other property lines are down the middle of the stream and then this one is off of the east side of the bank. Um, how does that look in planning down the road? Does that create more confusion or not? 
Well, to me, Sue, best practice would be to put it down the middle of the stream. As Steve pointed out earlier, that's going to stay more likely stay the same, that boundary. The bank could change, you know, with a flood. Yeah. And, and I don't know why. I don't, I don't. And Jamie, it's maybe you don't want to get into DEC and wetland issues. That's but I don't why know the, why you would. But why, why would you? Right. The, I, the, we didn't, I'm just being careful. Yeah, but for subdivision, you're not, you're not, property. you're not disturbing anything or proposing to disturb anything, right? Back it has so. no impact on us. Should have well, no. Arnie impact. was going to keep control of the creek. Well, that's a different matter. Right, Arnie. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. Uh, the reason we tried drawing the line prior to the actual bank of Limestone Creek is because we were told that it would cause headaches in terms of the wetland issues. So. Who told you that? Who told you that? That's the first guy you hooked me up with who didn't last on the job very long. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him, but, uh, you know, so as far as I knew, I, I'm not I'm not really understanding why the emphasis on placing the boundary on the creek line. If I just want to section off, you know, the, the 5.8 acres and the line comes before the, the creek, then I'm not sure. I'm not understanding what the issue is. Why the line? Arnie wants to keep a, the creek. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, the, yeah, I don't see that it's the creek has anything property. to do with the land because the boundary line that we're drawing comes before the creek anyway. Yeah. The reason you've got a line down the middle of the creek for the other properties is because you've got two different parcels on both sides of the creek. Arnie's the only parcel. Right, but when you have lot two, you're going to have a different, a lot two, you're going to have, or lot one, you're going to have a different parcel on the other side of the creek. That's Arnie. Arnie, Arnie is Arnie. the parcel. Arnie is all. When somebody buys lot one, there's right. going to be a new owner. That new owner is going to back up to somebody on the creek. He's going to back up to Arnie. Right. Right. It's like Arnie's everybody property. else. It's just going to be kind of odd because there's going to be a very tiny piece of land that belongs to Arnie well, on the right To simplify side this, why don't we do this? I can talk to Gary Cottrell, and instead of trying to make the boundary along the creek, you need five acres to approve this, correct? Well, it, it's a little more, and this is a discussion this board is having. It's not just, oh, come in, you know, and you want to, and if you want to lop off five acres, it's also an orderly development of land. That's what this board is charged with, not just, you know, right. not just whatever you might want. So that's why this discussion is ensuing about what makes sense for the land. And well, for I the didn't want to make it, I didn't want to yeah. propose two acres because there's value in five acres. Okay. Right. And and the thing is it ended up being 5.8, and we said, hey, let's just make it to the creek. If, if that's a problem, we can make we can square off the land and then Arnie can have his creek and this person will just be a, a square. It'll be a rectangular lot and Arnie will, instead of being diagonal like that, it'll just be square and five acres. That's and then the a discussion. creek doesn't come into play at all. Well, that's a discussion for this board to determine but, if that's a, an orderly and reasonable development of the land. You know, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to simplify. Oh no, I hear you, Carol. I'm, I'm not. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just trying to also give some instruction to the board because we're remote. It's kind of hard. So I'm trying to have have them kind of listen to me as well um, as the council, just to to understand that. Yeah, my my under, just my understanding is the only buildable part of the land that I had to sell off is the part that we're sectioning off and it's buildable because it, it avoids disturbing you know wetlands or any other the other legal requirements and it seems to be the only if you're looking for a logical explanation for the development of the land it's it's sequential in terms of all the other building that's been going on down Orendelphi Road because this is the only parcel of my land that borders on Orendelphi Road that's even buildable so that's the logic behind sectioning that piece of land off from my perspective. No, thank, thank you for that. And, and, I, and I throw this to the board um, for discussion um, on whether this 
configuration and where the line is, you know, does it matter to the board? What if it was just, you know, a, a straight triangle, a, you know, straight rectangle? What if it goes along the creek? What if it is a, along the top of the bank? What does this board think is reasonable or, or do you not care? And that's, that's the question for the board. Currently, if you look at the other lots, the back boundary on all the neighboring lots that show on this map, the back boundary is the center line of the crook. So in terms of consistency, it would make sense to keep it the same, but yet they've got enough acreage if they wanted to square it off, they could. Um, yes, obviously any, if anybody's gonna buy and build on it, it's gonna be up near, closer to the road than the creek. And, and the, the land will be I, more valuable without the um, stigma of being a wetland. But yet the, this, I don't know, looking at it and looking at the drawing that Steve drove up or drew up there, the wetland that shows actually possibly on lot one, depending on where you draw the line, it immediately just follows the creek, right? No, but if we go straight up and down, if we go right. from B, okay, if we, we drew a line from B inside, inside B, so we're not bleeding into the creek there, and we draw a line straight up, and it's following maybe that dotted line there, mm -hmm. then the, 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 the creek doesn't come into play at all. And Arnie gets to keep his creek because he's the only one that can cross it because he owns the bridge. And the bridge is grandfathered in. I guess my opinion at this point is, it sounded like it's up to the board to decide whether they care particularly about that end of the land or not. If, you, if they do, if you guys do, then obviously I got to go back to Gary again and, and have him draw the line wherever you guys want me to. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that that end of the land is that important in terms of my property value or sellable or stigma, all that kind of stuff. I just, I, at this point, I want to appease the board. I have enough land to do it no matter how you want me or where you want me to draw the line. I, 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 to me, logically squaring it off seems to make more sense because uh, you avoid any wetland issues, whatever they might be. Um, if it doesn't matter and the, the boundary at the back end goes up to the creek and, and wetland issues aren't an issue with me to subdivide, then draw the line there. But I guess it's the board's decision to make at this point how important that is to you guys. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because when you go, when a buyer will go to the bank to get a mortgage, they're going to require flood insurance because the property is going to have bleed into the flood zone. And then that's going to affect the value of the property. But if Arnie keeps control of the, the creek, that buyer does not have to, the bank isn't going to say this property is includes flood zone. And then they will be able to just get a clean mortgage without flood insurance. Except oh, it still so, has flood zone. Yeah, this still has a flood. The flood zone's right here. Yeah. No, yeah. that's not in the picture you showed. That's different. Right. Should, that's that's flood flood. This is the floodplain right here. This this line right here. Okay, because the, the, the picture hazard. you showed earlier with the blue was all didn't it didn't. It, that doesn't wet, show. Wet that doesn't show land. flood the floodplain. That's just wetlands. Okay. Okay. I see the word flood zone there. Okay. Yeah. Th this so is the flood zone. This shows the flood plane right here. It's a hundred okay. right here. Okay. I didn't, I didn't see that, yeah. that on um, lot two there. Okay. I, I see it now. But we need you to come to us with a line that shows the property boundaries. That's what we're asking. That's not right, our but decision at this, to make. At this point, well, at this point, the question, I think we have an idea of what they're thinking. Now, the question is what, what's acceptable to the board? That we, we've talked about the middle of the creek. We start, talked about the top of the bank line that's shown now, or we've talked about squaring it off. 
I don't I'm really okay see what the with, problem. Uh, I don't I see what the problem is running down the center of the creek because either way, whether she has it or not, you have the flood zone plus you have the buffer, and either way, uh, she would be affected for consistency, especially in the future. Somebody looking at it, the center of the creek would just be more consistent with what was uh, previously done. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, it also interrupts Arnie's Arnie's property. He'll only own half the he'll only own the creek up to the the bridge, and then he doesn't own the creek. He owns the creek on the other side of the. Well, he owns I mean, the, on the other side of the creek. You're, you're asking us. Arnie asked us. You don't really the own the creek. creek. Is the best <laughs> right? Nobody else. We're saying the best. Really, you really don't own the creek. the creek. Let's be clear on that. Okay. You don't really own the creek. Yeah. Yeah, my, my, my sentiment is that the board decides where the, you want the line drawn, and that's where we'll draw it. I mean, basically, and then I go back to Gary, and he draws the line where you guys find acceptable or whatever makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. and, and we, you know, take it from there. I would think, um, personally, I agree. I think it's more contingent to have it down the center line of the creek. Um, I, uh, I think it would make the property a little bit more, uh, you know, not in a huge way, but a little bit more desirable too, to have the back line go right to the creek rather than up above the creek. Uh, but that's just my personal um, opinion. But I think uh, just from a consistency standpoint, the center line of the creek would be my preference. I concur consistency and looking at all the others and generally with waterways it, it's down the middle of the waterway. Uh, exactly. I, I also agree. I think it's just best practice. Yeah, I would agree too. Yeah. I, I do have a question just out of curiosity. If, if the creek moves in some substantial way, does that property line move as well? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what was the question? Well, it's where it's where the creek is at that point in time, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I... it's going to have a meets and bounds survey with it, so it's going to be yeah. consistent with what it is. You know, if the creek moves, then I don't think the line moves. I mean, it, it, it Typically, follows, the center of the creek is the, not going to move, right? Right. It follows the center line of the creek. It's right. and that's what the that is what the meets and bounds description is going to say. It's yeah. going to say, and along the center line of the creek. Yeah. So it would move. It could move. Could move. Okay. Well. Same, same as a lot of others. I, I also, I don't have a problem with the center line of the creek. I also don't have a problem with top of the bank um, from a legal standpoint. Kevin, you got a comment? Uh, I, I, I agree with Jamie. I think probably the clearest would be the top of the bank, and then you don't have to worry about Limestone Creek moving. Um, but we just need a line somewhere, whether it's the middle of the creek or top of the bank. Uh, top of the bank makes more sense in defining it in perpetuity than the middle of the creek. Okay. It's a, it's a little, it is a little unusual because of the the balance of the property and the way and how it's owned and how that creek divides it and how it's all kind of not accessible, you know, over the creek. So it's a little bit unusual. Um, so this is a, a very vibrant discussion, but either if, if we agree, if everyone wants the line to the middle of the creek, then for sure he has to go back and redraw this bank. If we agree that it's the top of the bank, which is already shown, uh, we can administratively um, have that done before the maps filed. I like the top of the bank because for that reason that it makes it clear and plus Arnie, then you have that creek as your own, it's off that property. Right, and it makes sense to me, but like I said, I'll follow whatever directions you guys give me. I'm okay with the top of the bank. My I preference know. would be the center one of the creek, but I'm okay with the top of the bank. Yeah, I'm too. And that allows us to make a decision tonight. Right. 
I, would, I don't know. If, if that's the pleasure of the board, it would allow us to make a decision tonight. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with that on a, on the top of the bank. One, two, three. Sounds like majority is fine with, with the line at the top of the bank. So it would it, loosely, it, it's going to follow that dotted line. And if we go ahead um, and act on this tonight, then you would have to go back to um, surveyor and make sure that that gets um, the solid black line to match the others. Correct. Yep. Correct. Before the uh, before the map would be signed by the chairperson. And that leaves it at the 5.8 acres because that's where it was calculated from. Yes. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? Uh, the, only, the only thing I would say is just to remind the uh, that this property is still going to be affected by the, the floodplain and whatever buffers are there. Yes. So this doesn't really address that. So uh, to me, like we, I, we all talked about it, it doesn't make a huge difference either way. It, it right. doesn't necessarily get rid of the problems. No, Not that they're problems. Right. And I'll be the, I guess, the loan to center. I, I think it should be center of the creek. I think that's the better line for perpetuity. Because if the creek moves, the line moves. And if the creek moves, if the bank moves, then, um, you know, you could end up with the, the, the property line on the other side of the creek mm. over time. Which is true. That's true. Well, does that really matter? Well, it would matter. So uh, I'm going back to Jamie's point you know, orderly subdivision of land. Center of the Creek is the most orderly subdivision of this parcel, in my opinion. I, I, I don't agree. If you move that top of the bank line uh, west by 200 feet, you could still subdivide that lot and the, the creek wouldn't be any part of it. That's so true. Just just because just, the, just just because the creek happens to be there, we don't have to use that as the border. Well, I, I, I totally agree with that statement. But I, if that's the case, I would move. If it was my land, and I wasn't going to offer up uh, any creek frontage to the new buyer, I'd take and make the line on the east side of the the floodplain. The floods. Then flood you zone. wouldn't have the value of five acres. I mean, right. you have to, I mean, if somebody wanted to have you know, chickens or horses or llamas, they can't do that if it's less than five acres, correct? But you can move that line, it's five point, it's almost six acres right now, it's 5.8 acres. You could move that line away from the creek and it would still be five acres. Okay. So how do people feel about, if we've got to define the line, we could ask Gary to make it, five acres and bring it inside so it's not bordering the creek. My, my sentiment at this point is if it's, if it's not that crucial to the board uh, and, and there'd be a way of resolving this tonight, the way things stand, that would be preferable. However, um, you know- We'd like to get it on the market. <laughs> Well, right, so, that, so that would be leaving the top of the bank line as the property line, and we would be done on that right. as the property, right. 5.8 acres, right? Correct. All right. And what sort of chickens? <laughs> and the ones that lay eggs. Right. And one thing you can count on in the future is the top of that bank line will move. The top of the bank will move. So it's not always going to be the top of the bank. No, but if we make that the property line and no longer call it the top of the bank, but call it the property line, it won't move. Right. The property line will not move. Correct. He does he does have um, the top of the bank today? Right? Yeah, he does have a measurement on it and a, a course and distance. Steve, yeah. do you want to weigh in? 
Uh, I mean, with, with a bearing and distance here, I mean, you have a fixed point, you know, B to C. So that's pretty defined. So if the, if the creek widened or something like that, you still have that fixed point. So um, right. it just ne wouldn't necessarily be the top of bank in 50 years or 100 years or something. That's all. It could, well, we're it not going to call it that. Bit. We're going to call it the we're going to call it the property line if, yeah. if that's the decision. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it makes probably more sense not to say top bank. <laughs> it kind of creates some confusion there. Right. If if we voted on it tonight, we would say as one of the caveats would be to change the top of the bank line to the property line. Yeah. Just to, and, and show it as a property line, not a dashed Correct. line. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Well, I don't think that matters one way or the other, personally, but I don't think I'm confused. I don't know if anyone's confused about that. No, but uh, well, that I was confused about it because they do, this, they do this here, and that's not the property line. The, property uh, the, line the, only issue, here. the only issue is, is in the future, this is not really something that's very standard. If somebody actually thinks the top of the bank means something, <laughs> well, you know, yeah, who I, knows what they would do. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna take out top of the bank and just make it a boundary, correct? Yeah, works for me. Kevin, you're muted. Um, we can't hear Kevin. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I'm just saying that if we if we define that as the back property line, then it doesn't matter whether the creek moves or not. That will remain the property line. 955 feet from the center line of Warren Delphi Road and 695 feet from the uh, center of Warren Delphi Road. And then you tie B to C and that will always remain regardless of what happens to the creek. Is, is there a property, a legal description for the lot? Um, Arnie, do you have an original deed or do I need to? It, it wouldn't be a deed, a legal description for lot one that was drawn by the surveyor. Uh, I hear it. We don't have, we, it was never sent to us. You have everything that we've, we've ever received. So we would need a legal description from? Yeah, we, we should have a legal description. Then that will, that will certainly um, allay all issues, sure. You know, with point of beginning and an end point and the meets and bounds. Mm -hmm. So for tonight, Jamie, if we go along and as majority are saying the back. So can you zoom away, Steve, so we could see the whole map? Because when you look north and you look at every single other property line, nobody is going up to the bank. Everybody is going to the center of the creek. So yeah, they're backing you know. up to Arnie's property. Yeah, and that's the difference. Arnie's property will still uh, own both sides of the creek. Uh, lot. That's uh, fine. I'm just paying homage to the planners that came before us, and I thought they did a marvelous job defining property lines along creek beds by going to the center of the creek. And I think we're the exception. We're breaking the norm. Valid point. Yeah, I, I, I think I've been persuaded to the, the center of the bank because I've had property issues in the past because of something that was done unconventional. And my concern would be that this would somehow be a problem, not necessarily today, but in the future. So you're saying center of the creek? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I didn't have any issues on this particular property I had here, but I had some issues on prior properties. And the, the whole issue about was something was done that was not conventional. And there was a, 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 a two year process to resolve what the property lines really were. And I'd hate to see somebody else have to go through that process. I suspect if you had a survey or survey those other lines on uh, Limestone Creek, uh, based on the distance from the center of Warren Delphi Road to the back of those lots, I suspect that creek has moved somewhat 
And those lines today are probably not the same lines as they originally were put here because that creek does change because we do get a lot of flooding mm -hmm. in that area. So um, if you were to resurvey each one of those parcels, I suspect that creek probably is not the center of the creek today. Yeah, I think that's why uh, Kevin, they say plus or minus. But their property lines are still the center of the creek. Yeah. Well, that's that's the Correct. that's the question. The, their so, legal descriptions are center line of the creek. Yeah. So they that's where showing with the creek. So that's if the why, creek moves, they get more land, or they get less land. Somebody, right? so, somebody wins. Right. I would get my backhoe and I would divert the Thank creek you. and get a lot more property. <laughs> <laughs> So. so so my vote is for the top of the bank line to be changed to the property line and that leaves the that part of the creek in the ownership of Arnie on with lot two and he owns that other part of the creek that creek does not define the back of his property it's in the middle of his property and so yeah. this piece this piece of limestone creek on lot one will remain on Arnie's property, whether we move it to the top of the bank line or move it 50 feet further towards Warren Delphi Road. I think that's what Arnie, from my, my listening of the discussions, that's what he wants. And so uh, if he's amenable to that, I would have you change the line from the top of the creek to the boundary, make it a solid line, and that's the back boundary of lot one. And I would argue to make the boundary the center of the creek and be consistent with all the other property lines to the north and south. Except for lot two. Lot two, it'll never be the middle of the creek. That's fine. He's got a hook there. That's, that's perfectly fine. But lot one will be a standalone lot, like lots to the north and the lots to the south. And I'd like to see that consistent with those lots. The and and I would do what, what's your... Um, I'm one of consistency. I'm one of consistency. I still think down the middle of the the creek. But. And who else? Uh, who, but what? now it just did a little bit of research too, and that some different things always comes back to how is the deed written. So if the deed. We'll get a legal description based upon what we say tonight and what the final line is. Okay. You know, if lot two was split off, I, you know, that's that if that were to happen, obviously, if if we did it consistently, that would go through the center of the creek as well, unless they're just going to break off a much smaller piece. Can't, he can't go through lot two because it's all land no, 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 no. Be landlocked. I'll... It'll be landlocked. Oh, okay. So that, that's the whole thing. There's, he's got a lot of land and this is his only buildable opportunity. And, and the, last, the last point I wanna make, it, it really is the decision of the applicant to tell us where to put the line. And then we rule on where the applicant has applied and, and, and put before us where he wants the line. So really it's the applicant's choice of where the line should be. And then we should rule on what they have uh, put before us. That's just my humble opinion. And I think we have a responsibility for orderly subdivision, which would include the center of the creek. And and that would be something we'd rule on after the applicant put forward where they want the boundary of that property. Most applicants come to us and they say, I want to subdivide this off. And here are the four sides of that piece of property. And well, we it's a rule... conversation. I think the conversation I... is going to the applicant based on how we decide today, what course to take in the future before right, the next but our, meeting. But our role is not to decide what comes before us. Our, rule, our role is to rule on what is presented to us. That's my humble opinion. Well, the applicant so has already said Kevin, that he doesn't care one way or another, really. He's but leaving go, it up to us as preference, so. Go back but, to I, I, but I don't think that's our I don't think that's our role. So would we have an applicant come to us and say, hey, I want to subdivide my property. Can you guys tell me uh, how I should draw the lines? I think well, I, be... I guess then at, at this juncture, I, I, you guys have to rule on what I've presented to you. And if you reject yeah. it, you, then you, then I have to go back and accommodate whatever the objection 
to resolving this issue tonight is. Um, right. on the you're other you're hand, gonna have to come back with a new drawing anyway, but we were, we were gonna rule on this drawing based on you making some changes. As Jamie said, if we decide it's the middle of the creek or it's the top of the bank or it's another 50 foot back, we can rule on that tonight and then you would change the drawing right to meet so, so, what we, right right so I, our, I thought there was an issue of whether the we go back to square one or whether this could be handled administratively at this point right was it, my it still it, it still can be it, handled administratively it just you know but i don't I, think I, this, I don't think the center of the of the creek one i think that would need to come back because it's not shown that way it would need to come back yeah. So that's my concern. I, I guess what's presented to you tonight, I guess, is what you guys can make a decision on since you have to rule on what I guess I presented. <laughs> Jamie, uh, what is the difference? What is the difference between us ruling on the dotted line that's called the top of the bank or the center of the creek? Because the creek is shown in the center certainly is evident in what we're seeing before us. What's the difference? Because it, it's there's no line. There's no line there that shows the property line. It, well, there whereas, is on, it, as you as you said, there are lines on all the other properties. Why wouldn't we just say it it has would have to follow the center of that line? Otherwise, we wouldn't approve it. But we could approve it based on you having a line in the center of the creek. What's the difference? We probably could do that, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's yeah. because because it's more or less a fixed point. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a and there's come back and, and then have and have Steve look at it administratively. Have me look at it. If it goes down the middle of the creek, do we have to get the DEC or the EPA involved? No, it, no, it's just a line. It's just it's a line. Just, it's, it's just a line, and there are there there are two lines existing already, the the borders of the creek, and we would say that it would be the halfway point between those borders. He would draw a line like the rest of the properties, and and we could say that we approve this based on you coming back with a map that shows that line. Or if we chose the top of the bank, we approve it based on you coming back with that and whatever else we want to change. But we, we can rule on it this evening as long as you agree to make those changes. Works for me. All right, so the consensus is center line of the creek. Yeah, uh, well, that's my uh, vote. Yeah. I would favor that too. All right, and, and, I'm good and I would that. vote for that. If we're going to rule tonight, I, I would, if everyone else is voting for that, yeah. I would vote for that. That makes a difference for me too. I mean, I just would like to be able to expedite this for the applicant. So, um, but that's my preference. Center line of the Creek. Right. Yes, same idea. And that would go only, that would go only before the bridge to a, a point that would be, uh, if, if you drew line DC through the creek, that's where the border would end at that line. Yes. Yeah, it's gonna stay out of the way of the bridge. We, did we do seeker on this one yet? No. No. Okay, so we have some work to do. Yep. Okay, so looking, and I agree with this, if line D, C is extended to midpoint of the creek, it appears that it will not interfere with the bridge as drawn. And then midpoint of the creek down to, well, it looks like the lot line of A, B, with a little bit of extension because of William Riley's lot, that there's a point just a little further west of B where the center line would draw into. Everybody follow mm -hmm. that description? Yep. Yep. Okay. And let's see, John Carl Dan Roy. So we, now do we have to get this other parcel person who owns that parcel involved in the process? No. no. No, I don't want to complicate anything. There's no. no setback. There's no setback for the bridge, is there, Jamie? Or Steve? The the bridge is not going to be relevant to yeah, this. Yeah, so no no one else needs to be involved. We can make that decision here. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, uh, let's see. Sounds like everybody and duly noted Kevin's reservations on that, but everybody in favor of the center line of the for westernmost boundary line. So, yes. Yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. Yep. Yeah, I've got them and myself included. So. Just a question for the applicant. That that bridge is existing, correct? Yes. And what does it consist of? Uh, it's made up of uh, railroad ties, I believe. Is it to drive over? Uh, it it could over? bear weight. I know, I've never tested it for weight. <laughs> I don't it, think I it, want it, to. I'm usually busy. Uh, <laughs> I'm usually busy uh, getting uh, timber that uh, beaver have cut down that gets stuck underneath the bridge, and I got to clear it so you know the the yeah. branches from the beaver, so not, as to not damage the bridge. But it, it's been there forever. I mean, as long as my parents were here, which was like 50, 60 years. Um, I did have it. Uh, I think it was maybe eight years ago, uh, reinforced. Um, but I've never had any problems with it, but we've never really used it for, for anything other than to sit on and fish off of it. Okay. Any other questions, comments on the map or subdivision? Hearing not we do have uh comments planning board from the county reviewed it um their standard standard comments um on the map looking at the driveway that's a proposed driveway has county looked at that for a driveway permit at all or yeah. they get Pardon me. We, we haven't because we didn't have anything approved yet. Like, okay. if, would these boundaries be acceptable? And if they are, then I guess we go to the next step. Okay, because the county's comment. Um, well, let's see. Applicant advised to contact the county DOT prior to our approval and submit the site distance estimates to the department for review. Mm -hmm. um, so Sue, yep. I, I would suggest that he just take off the provo proposed drive. It's, it's kind of makes it look like we approved it. Correct. Yep. They could just take, uh, what do you think? Take off the wording of it? Just take off the dotted line in the you know, I, I just keep it plain. Because they've got, obviously, an off-road frontage. And yeah, I agree, I agree with that because it says pr proposed drive, but just yeah. take it off the map. Yeah, I agree with Dan. So remove that proposed driveway? Move the proposed driveway and add in the center line of take the it off. creek. Okay, if we were to keep the driveway, what would we have to do? Just call the county and get it approved? It's DOT. a lot more complicated than that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you give the, the three utilities and the city? It's the I've done it in the city. I just haven't done it outside the city. Yeah, it's, really, it's, it's doable later on when you sell the property. It can be done. Okay. Right, Jamie. Well, you would want to make sure that you've got your sight distance because there's a lot of issues if you don't. Is there any, I don't, I'm not familiar. Is that no, a straight no, road? They, think there's... they won't have a problem with site distance okay. on that section. That's yeah, really, it's, that's it's... General, generally what they're concerned about is the site distance. Yeah, and it's, someone, it's, it's straight it's, as the crow flies. Yep, so right. someone who, who would go in for a building permit would probably deal with it. So you don't want it on the map. Because yeah, there's really not a lot of- We don't want it on the map, I will tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, well familiar with that st I'm, I'm familiar with that stretch okay. of Orange Delphi Road. You're not going to have a problem with sight distance there. Mm -hmm. No. 
no, that's not the problem. Just because of that same proposed drive, if you didn't have the approval right now, that it's just contradicting. So right. So the so removed uh, driveway make the boundary the middle of the creek. Yep. Okay. Um, so county comments. That was the the big big issue off of that. Um, Steve, otherwise, any other comments? We should be good, I think. With those please, please provide a, a meets and bounds legal description. Okay. If no other comments, uh, Jamie, we okay for the seeker then? Before we continue with the public hearing? Correct. Okay. Um, okay, we do have application things, uh, questions filled out. Um, we have to go through the short environmental assessment. It's a series of 11 questions that I read through and each question can be answered either by answering no or a small impact may occur or the other answer is a moderate to large impact may occur. I'm going to read each question and if the board has any comments after that, um, there's a chance otherwise answer as you see fit. Number one, will a proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? No or small impact may occur. Two, will the proposed action result in a I didn't, change? I didn't hear. Did everybody agree with that? <laughs> I yeah. know. Agreed. Yes. I agree. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, number two, will the proposed action result in the change in the use or intensity in use of land? No or small use? Small impact? Agreed. Agreed. Number three, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? No or small impact? Agreed. 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 Um, and I'm gonna ask board members that if you, if your sound is off, at least give like a thumbs up or so that it's an agreement then. Um, number four, will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area or CEA? No or small impact may occur. Agreed. 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 Okay. Number five, will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? No or small impact may occur. Agreed. 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 Six, will a proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? No or small impact may occur. Agreed. 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 Number seven, will the proposed action impact existing public or private water supplies or public and private wastewater treatment utilities? No or small impact may occur on both of these. Agreed. 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 Number eight, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archeological, architectural or aesthetic resources? No or small impact may occur. Agreed. 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 Number nine, will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources such as wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, and fauna? No or small impact. Agreed. 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 Number 10, will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No or small impact. Agreed. 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 
And 11 will a proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No or small impact. Agreed. 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 All right. Based on these findings, I make a motion for a negative deck on the Comar subdivision. Comar Sue, Sue, can I point out just one thing in part one? Absolutely. Um, question seven, they have the an answer of yes for it being located in or adjacent to a critical environmental area. That should be no. Correct. New York State lists critical environmental areas, and this is not one of them. Okay. So we, we should just change that to no, that's all. Okay. On there, on theirs, it's no, we already answered it no. Mary Beth, did you make note of that in the copy of the application that you have in that file? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, make a motion for a negative deck on the Comar Farm subdivision. I'll second. Second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Everybody said aye or raise the thumb. So motion is unanimous. And from there, I'd like to make a motion to continue the public hearing of the Comar Farm subdivision. Second. second. Second by Carl. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is now continued and is open. Um, do we have anybody from the public commenting, questioning? So Veronica, we got anybody? So we have awkward songs. <laughs> How do we have anybody or not? No mic on Veronica. Any suggestions? Is Veronica there? Veronica, you're muted. Does anyone have Veronica's number to call her to unmute her? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. You want me to call her, Sue? Looks like Sue's calling. Okay. 
Um, I don't see anybody in the chat or Q and A, and none of the um, attendees have asked to speak. Okay, I appreciate that, Veronica. Yeah. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. I think Roy got the second first. Second first. Okay. Second first. <laughs> All in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? The motion carries. Public hearing is now closed. Um, Okay, like to make a motion to approve the Comar Farm Subdivision. Um, I guess based off, end, but with two revisions, so it'll be a contingent approval of getting the map reflecting these changes. Um, based on the map dated 6-7-21 by Cottrell Land Surveyors with changes to remove the proposed driveway from lot one and to place the back boundary line at center of Crick, the back boundary of lot one at the center of the Crick line. Center um, of Limestone Creek. Yes, thank you, Kevin. Basically connecting, uh, moving C a little further west and point B a little further west. So it goes the center line of Limestone Creek. Just to make a correction on that, Sue, if you don't mind, that oh, the uh, the rear border line of the property will be the center of Limestone Creek from point B as it states, as it exists on the um, plan from 6721 to a point that is a continuation of line DC to the center of Limestone Creek. Um, I, I think Sue was correct the first time, Kevin. I don't think that B, B is, is not. B has B is, not in B, creek. It's already in the center of the creek. No, it no, isn't. It's no, it's not. It's the top of the bank. Yep. Yeah, it looks like the edge of the creek or something. Yeah. Okay. It so, basically It'll uh, the point of the I don't know. seven twenty looks like it goes to the center, not the six ninety five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I see it. Yeah. Is meander a legal term, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Let me. Oh, you can hear me. You can't see me. Yes, yeah, it, you can have it, it meanders along the center line of the creek, sure. From B to C, so. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it does, it does cross, yeah, B is right at the creek. Yes. Right. Yeah, okay, I see it now that I get a close up. Right, so you have to extend B to uh, intersect well, with the existing center of the creek. Got it. B is gonna be moved to, and I'm assuming a northwest corner that's of William Riley's lot. Yeah, correct. That existing point, that's where B would start then. Yeah, yeah. it has to be moved to that corner. Yes. Yeah. yeah, B is right on the border right now. Gotcha. Good, good call, Sue. I just need magnifying glasses. <laughs> I won't tell you how much mine's enlarged on my computer screen. <laughs> Arnie and Carol, you understand the two points there? Yes. I believe so. We need the meets and bounds and the legal description. We need to remove the driveway. And then 
um, the boundary um, B is fine. We just have to have C come out and meet it in the middle of the creek. And to clarify, when I say B is fine, um, well, B is B is already existing on the creek right now, isn't it? Not well, exactly. It, it points to the, it's not creek the center side, not the center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just just move B down to the existing point that William Riley uses for his corner of his boundary. His corner of his property. Okay, gotcha. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that and that so, leaves the description of A B C D A correct. Right. Yeah, it leaves that 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 remains correct, except now the five point eight plus or minus acres will change. Yes. Right. Because it'll be a complicated, um, it's easy to draw a straight line, but now they draw the creek line, it'll be a little more complex to calculate that acreage. That's the plus or minus. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Sue, you may want to add to that motion that the chairperson would be authorized to sign the map after a review administratively by uh, council and um, uh, planning board engineer when the changes are made. So moved. Got that, Mary Beth? <laughs> uh, I'll second. Okay. Okay. So, John, was that John? No. Who seconded yes. it? Okay. John seconded it. So, we have a motion and a second. Uh, just some discussion. What is the note that says subject to? Establishment or something to Syracuse He's Light not. Company? What is that? Easement to Syracuse Light Company. It's just an, an easement oh, that's hanging easement. out there in the public, yeah, records. Basically, for like utility poles or whatever. Yep, I just didn't understand that, but I got it. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, and and the tie line will be removed. I what? That's and if up they to, need it for something, that's surveyor. fine. Yeah, it's up yeah. to the surveyor. If they need it for something, that's fine. But yeah, I, I don't think we need it. It should go. Yeah, it should go because then it would be confusing as to where the line is and where the calculation for the acreage would be. Can I just say that that's really a surveyor's call as yeah. long as we have where the center line is. Yeah, and it, and it might it have be it helpful there for... to them to establish a point because they mm -hmm. use that further down. Um, you say well. it's so I, would, I would leave that alone as long as it's dashed or something not made to look like a property line I, yeah I when, when steve and i look at it we'll we'll know okay i don't come across that very often uh, any of my surveys so is that is there a reason for it then uh, it there, could there, be because of the creek. it could be because of the creek okay because the other one is they're loosely showing William Riley's on the yeah. back side. So yeah, okay. I've never A B C D A before. So helps it go. I guess I could go either way on that one then. But anyway, okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion has carried. So, Carol and Arnie, get a hold of Mr. Cottrell with those changes. Get on. Um, I guess submit the PDF form as quick as possible. And if that meets Jamie and Steve's approval, then get them printed so I can sign them. Including your mile. That's the one on the four. You need four copies on the vellum. Uh, yeah, and we're going to need a couple extra um, paper copies in the office in our file. <clears throat> also, are we still are we still using vellum? That's great. Vellum, <laughs> mylar, whatever. Mylar. Yep. I'm sorry, I said vellum. I that's okay. I, I would love us to use vellum. That's what Shakespeare used. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong brain cell, it's a different de decade. Um, yeah, so you want to- That would be a different century. 
<laughs> yeah, it was a different century, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, first and foremost, though, get the, the changes in so we can review them and make sure that everything is met, what we approved tonight. So, okay. Okay, sounds good. Thank, Thank you for you. your... Okay. Thank Are you. Are we all set? Can we log <clears throat> off? Yes. You're good to go. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much for your Thank time, you. folks. Good luck, Arnie. Thank you. It's going to put my 20 year old through her senior year at Nazareth. <laughs> there you go. Good, good luck, Thanks That's for cool. putting up with us. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. By the way, does everyone know what vellum is? Yeah. Like onion it, paper. No, it's not onion paper. John, what's vellum? Um. <laughs> it's a paper. I assume it's a reed-based paper. Steve? But, I believe it's a reproducible, but yeah, right, like a mylar, but yeah, yeah. different material, right? Yeah, Evan, what animal is it from? Sheep. Do <laughs> <laughs> ah. we want the definition? It's prepared animal skin or membrane, typically used as a material for writing on. Yes, mm. not in this century, though, as you know, Sue. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'll admit, yes, I had to Google. But yes. Yes. Vellum is what Shakespeare wrote on. Jamie, you should know that. There's some old legal documents written on vellum. I was waiting for you to learn me that. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it's a phrase that's getting misused on a regular basis. Right. Yes, and, and I'm I'm out Word. to correct I'm out to correct all of those people. The book and of Kells, the book of Kells is written on vellum, and it's appreciated. Yes, and the first legal document from King uh, King John was written on vellum, and that would be what document, Jamie? The Magna Carta. Yeah. In fact, that's what I have up on the screen right now. <laughs> what, the Magna Carta? I was looking to see if the Magna Carta was written on vellum. Yes. What we got next? <laughs> that's, a, that's enough. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> Doesn't it sound a little like Tim? I mean, these are the kinds of questions Tim likes to pose. I think that Kevin could have been I'll do just... better. I'll do better. Oh. Okay, uh, next on the agenda, uh, tier three solar farm discussion uh, leading up to a board recommendation, um, pivot energy on Sweet Road, parcel number 012-01-03.1, the three tier, yeah, tier three solar farm, not a three tier. So, um, Okay, in review, we have a uh, proposal in front of us waiting. Um, we need to make a recommendation either for or against this application um, proposal, I guess. And from this board, um, our recommendation decision will go to the town board and then it goes from there. So, um, Last month we had a uh, lengthy discussion on it. A uh, month before we had some discussion also. Um, I guess I'll start off tonight in that um, obviously we have a diverse board as we should and our opinions all matter. Our opinions are um, some have been voiced, some, um, I'm waiting to hear, Kevin was not with us last 
month. Um, like to hear some of his comments tonight also. Um, again, to remind board members that our position at this point is that we have um, a newly adopted town law, which does allow for tier three solar farms. Um, however, our charge at this point is to review the application or proposal when it comes and match it up to what our guidelines are within the town and state um, according to what the law is and how it's written. And this is a case um, when you look at the master plan that there are different things, different um, strategic areas that um, are in the forefront. Um, I believe that some of these, um, such as the prime egg or view sheds or um, preserving open space and taking into consideration um, nearby residences are all, all important, as is renewable energy. Um, we need to look at placement of these within the town and does it meet the spirit of the law and our master plan and egg and markets. So I guess with that, um, maybe we could hear Kevin first because he wasn't with us last month. You're muted, Kevin. Uh, not anymore. No. Uh, I, I believe Roy said something which sort of hit me is that um, based on the soils in the town of Pompey, is there any place that we can put a solar farm? Yeah, and that, that's an interesting question. That is a good question. Um, yeah, a place that uh, place that wouldn't be viewed by a lot of people, uh, that would be accessible by road or something to get to it. I could think of a couple spots way up on a hill somewhere, uh, maybe it would work. I don't know what the soils are there, but uh, most of the town of Pompey that on the open land is 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 just good soils. And, and, and we also have the issue of, of uh, the uh, power infrastructure, you know, where there is, uh, Steve, is it three phase? I think it's what it's called. Yeah, three phase, yeah. Right, so, so, so when you take into consideration where the three phase is and the, the soils, um, if there's no place in Pompey to put a solar farm, why didn't we just address that when we put the solar farm uh, proposal together and just say, we can't do it in the town. Um, and, and, and when I look at the proposal that's before us, I think it's the only one that's come before us so far. To my knowledge. Right, so um, I, 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 I know there's some things we can do to certainly screen it and, uh, uh, but if, if we say that we're not gonna put a solar farm on any uh, prime soil in Pompey, as Roy said, it would be hard to place a farm anywhere in Pompey. So why did we even put a, uh, a program together that said we, we would allow it if, if there's no place to put it? So that's my quick down and dirty. Sue, so, so did Our, we leave the public hearing open? We don't, we don't have, have a public hearing. There's this no public just, hearing. This is this, a recommendation. Oh, right. or, or, you know, a report, you know, so um, it, it doesn't have. It's it what our, our thoughts as a board and as I said it's we have info we know the location we've 
looked at, okay, you know, what soil types, location, um, it, how we're charged though as a board is to take into consideration how the law is written. Within that law, it says take into consideration what our master plan is, and it also says consideration of New York egg and markets. And when you draw those in, it, it, it's not an easy decision because you've got, there's a lot to look at. Um, yes, this particular parcel, um, there's some wetlands on it, but majority of it is prime farmland soils. Yes, some of it is wooded, other is currently being used as farmland. It, according to the master plan, sits in within the view shed that they wanted to protect. Um, it's off of a fairly busy north-south, I guess arterial, if you will, um, with cars going by, gentle slope where they want to put, they propose to put the farm. Um, yeah, could be um, a bigger hedge from the road as you travel by it. Um, how is that view shed from other, other areas looking back at it? Um, we do know a couple of the, it's not heavily populated as far as living right next to it, but the people that are closest, um, they would be impacted and they're not, obviously they're not in favor of it based on what we have heard from them. Um, we have to look at it at the here and now, not much like any of our other applications that come before us of, you know, somebody always gets nervous when there's a piece of land that's subdivided and how often do we hear, well, what's gonna happen with it? You know, what's, we wanna protect it that, to make sure that there's not 12 houses put on that later. Well, we have to look at the here and the now of that parcel. Um, so the here and the now is, is this a good lo location? Does it meet the spirit of the law and what we are charged with? Does it meet the spirit and the criteria that is in front of us? Um, not a, well, it could be housing. Yeah, it could be, but that's not the proposal in front of us. Is this the place for solar? But Sue, uh, when you say that our role is to look at the here and now, we just finished an application that we talked about the future um, by, by putting the line in the center of the creek. Dan made the argument that, you know, we're, our, our job is to look at what planning boards will do in the future. So uh, with, with that uh, mindset, um, I think we have to say, okay, we, we don't allow a solar uh, farm in that location and they're gonna build, uh, you know, two-story homes uh, in, the, in that area. How would that affect the view shed? Because we do have to look towards the future. Uh, it, it doesn't prohibit him from building houses uh, on that property and they would certainly impact the view shed um, if they were painted, you know, pastel colors, uh, right? So I, I, think, I, I think we have to look at the whole picture. We can't just say that we just have to look at what's, what's here before us. I think we have to look at the whole, at the whole picture. You know, we, we put in, in place a windmill uh, ordinance. And uh, when you go to Pompey Hill, you can see all the windmills in Fenner and uh, mm -hmm. beyond. Even though yep. they're not, even though they're not in our town, we can certainly see them from there. So yes, I, I I think we have to consider it more than just what's in front of us now, but what will the future hold? And we did, did discuss that with these solar panels. What happens in 15, 20 years when they wear out? Who takes them down? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Okay. Other comments, gentlemen. If we go too far with the way it's worded, uh, a group of houses on that land uh, 
would do the same thing, except they might be viewed as less offensive to look at than the solar panel, but they'd still be destroying a lot of good soils. I, I, I think we're in the, I, I hate to bring up that, uh, you know, just to guide you better. We're not talking about houses coming in here. We're talking about one thing. We're talking about, is this an appropriate place for solar? Whether it could, I mean, it could some way, someday the town board could change it. It can become an industrial site, whatever. The only thing that's before us right now is this law as relating to solar. I don't know and, if that I, is what and, and Jamie, I agree with I agree with you, but what we're called is a planning board. And if you look at the definition of planning, it really impacts the future. So if our plan is to say we don't want we don't want a solar farm there. In fact, we've written the, the rules and based on the soils of Pompey, nowhere in Pompey can you put a solar farm based on what we've written in the rules, something else is gonna happen. So I, I, I think it, it certainly it is part of planning what's gonna happen there because we've, we've designed our codes in, in a certain fashion. And if we design the, the solar codes to be prohibitive throughout the town to put a solar farm in, then maybe that pushes uh, housing development. So I think planning well, is a little more complex than just yeah. what's, what's in front of us today. Well, what, what I would say is we're really about carrying out the plan, not actually creating the plan. You know, uh, we don't create the master plan. We didn't, you know, we're not the town board. Uh, I, to me, one of the primary issues is the, the master plan says what it says. It has whatever level of clarity it, that it has in it, which I would argue is not sufficiently clear. Um, but so, you know, I, I think what uh, Sue was trying to say basically is we have the rules that we have before us. And to me, I think there's two issues. One issue is based on the rules and the guidelines that are given, uh, what would we recommend? And I, you know, what I would recommend based on those guidelines would, would probably be different than what I might do if I was on the town board, but to make the town board decision without uh, having um, that discussion with, with uh, um, the public or the other board members, I think is, is really difficult for us to do, you know, based on the guidelines that we were given, it's not very clear to me whether, just like you're saying, it's not clear to me whether it would uh, be appropriate for this location. That doesn't mean on the town board, I would necessarily make that decision, but you have, we have a lot more discretion on the town board. You know, the town board has asked us for our opinion. That's what we're tasked with, Carl, is we're, we're tasked with reporting back to the town board on what we feel is appropriate, if I, mm -hmm. as I understand. And what I, I would say is that if they wanted, th there should probably be more clarity offered in the, uh, the master plan on what they wanted to do with renewables. And I don't think that it seems more, you know, obviously I didn't draft it, but it seems to be uh, not the primary focus of what they thought was important. Now, maybe that should be changed perhaps, but uh, it doesn't look to me like it, uh, was really drafted sufficiently well to provide the guidance needed to, to recommend or not recommend. I think based on what's there, uh, you know, it's not, it's not clear that it should be recommended. Although I must say in the meeting that we had before, we talked about mitigation and a lot of other factors. And uh, so there are things to me that make it sound like it's certainly something that could be approved. But based on what they put before us and in, in the rules and or the guidelines in the uh, master plan, I think it's a little uh, unclear on what should be done. I have a I have a question because it's been stated that all of Pompey is prime land. This prime farmland is that true? No, uh, that's not true. But. Um... Jamie, but I, I went through it um, and I sent you the narrative at the last meeting. Um, approximately 75% of the land in the town of Pompey is considered prime farmland or prime, uh, farmland of statewide significance. 
So we're talking about three quarters of the land in Pompey is considered prime soil. Important and John, did you, and John, did you uh, consider the uh, three phase and where that's located on the existing, the additional 25% or whatever it is? No, no. I mean, well, um, I don't know if anybody read my revisions to the last month's meeting minutes, but um, I described it in there. I mean, basically, because three quarters of the soils in the town are considered important soils, uh, we made a decision early on that uh, we were going to allow these on prime farmland as long as it was below the 50% ceiling of prime farmland for the parcel. Um, we talked about banning them outright on prime farmland or farmland of statewide significance and decided that based on three quarters of the soil from Pompey being important soils and the three phase infrastructure that effectively you'd be banning solar farms. So um, that was why we all agreed to a 50% seal um, Agreed. as to what was allowed. Agreed. Is it just, just and to I follow up on? Before too, I mean, that was run by Central New York Regional Planning uh, for their input um, because we were concerned about that. And they came back and said, uh, we thought they thought we were being overly conservative on that and suggested uh, reducing it. And I told them we were we were concerned about preserving farmland in the town and uh, therefore we were going to stick with the 50 percent, no more than 50 percent of the prime farmland could be used. So that was how we arrived at that. Right. But I would po I would point out, I, I don't I really don't think the prime farmland is an issue, um, I think that ship has sailed. Uh, the law allows it. And uh, for us to go back and say, we're not going to recommend it because it's on prime farmland, I think is, uh, I don't think that argument holds any water. Uh, I think it's a balance. I think, I think it's the balancing because it, it's one of the criteria. Well, okay, I, I'll go along with that, Jamie, but yet at the same time, even the egg and markets uh, um, solar mitigation guidelines are just that, they're guidelines. Um, so you stack that up again, you know, I, I guess it would be a question for you, but what's the pecking order? Uh, we've got a law that says you can use up to 50% of the prime farmland. Um, do guidelines trump a local law. Um, I think that once once there's a decision, this this recommendation goes to the board that this is an area, and then you start getting into the more specific cri criterion. So, in a broad sense, is this where the overlay should go? And then you start getting into that only fifty percent. Can I ask a right. question with, on the fifty percent? Is that public comment and a public hearing and all that? Right. Can I ask a question on the 50%? John, is it 50% of that piece of property or 50% of the total land in Pompey? No, no, 50% of the proposed parcel. Right. And so this proposed parcel, what's the percentage for the farm? About 80, about 80 acres, if I recall right, from the map Sue sent us is a uh, prime farmland. And, and, and how many acres are proposed for the solar farm? 21. Okay. 21. So it, so so it like meets 20 the criteria. Percent. So it meets yeah. the criteria. Yeah. Right. Under its written, um, possibly that it should have also looked at prime farmland that's currently tillable because a lot of this is side hill wooded lots that's still prime farmland um so, well but again but I mean, in, the spirit, sales. In, in the spirit as you wrote it that it meets that criteria yes egg and markets yeah. and there are other well i know there's other towns in the state that flat out just totally if it's prime farmland it's a flat out no so Pompey chose to put 50% in there, but it is prime farmland. 
specifically uh, it reads any tier three solar energy system shall not exceed 50% of the area of prime farmland, unique farmland or farmland of statewide importance on the parcel as defined by federal or state law slash regulation. Right. So that takes away a lot of ambiguity. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. You know, I, like, like I said, I think that issue should be a non-issue in my mind. The view shed, that's a, you know, that's something I think that's worth discussing. Um, but uh, the soils issue, the way I'm looking at it is the law allows it. So who are we to say, well, no, we don't think it should be allowed, you know? Well, well that's all right. I mean, that we have to work with the guidelines so the, the law, the way that is written. No, no, what I want to, what I want to kind of reiterate is that yeah. it, it's as what's going to happen is basically a zone change, right? The what's in, once this board says, yep, we think this is a probably a decent place for solar, there's going to be a zone change. And then within that zone change, at that point, there's a whole other um, procedure where that whole 50% is going to come into effect. So the board said, I, what the board is saying is, we think it might be okay to have solar. We're not exactly sure where it's going to be. Come in with your application. We're going to weigh all these criteria. Planning board is going to first tell us what they think. Then we're going to have a public hearing and tell you what we think, if we should even quote change the zone. It's, it's confusing. And I, and I just wanted to try to clarify that. So, so does that mean that they're going to do this uh, uh, parcel by parcel as things go on or? 100%. Or we don't know. Okay. Oh, we don't, no, that is how the law is written. Absolutely. It goes parcel by parcel because that's the only way you could determine the 50%. Right. <clears throat> But I, I still go back to the point that John is saying that there's only only 25% of, of the land in Pompey uh, would be sort of outside the limits. And then when you add in the, the uh, three phase infrastructure, we've really limited it. But within that, we've said you can have it on prime farmland. You just have to only use 50% of it. So for me, Kevin, it's everyone one of the criteria down to the, okay, I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry, right. Dan. So that's well, one of the criteria. So I, I wonder like if we're looking at the rest of the criteria, maybe we should do that. I understand well, the, go ahead, what I'm everyone sorry. is saying about that. Go ahead, to me, it's back to the view. It, as it relates to the people and the neighbors, you know, if you're in a house and somebody's building a housing subdivision, yeah. you're going to two houses from your existing house. You really can't. It's a little hypocritical to be against a house if you're living in a house. But if you're in a house and you're going to be looking at a solar field, well, then I think the the, the neighbors have got a some standing as to how we screen, or we should take some standing as to how we screen those individual houses from something like a solar. All right. And that's part of our job is to determine what sort of screening there should be. And, you know, uh, all of that is part of part of our, our task. And which, you know, is, which is part of site plan if it gets approved with the overlay zone right. and then back to us then. But the right. view to me is, is twofold. It's view shed to me means seeing it from the road, you know, travelers. Um, and then there's the view and the, and the sensitivity to the neighbors and the impact on the neighbors. I agree. I agree, I agree with that. <clears throat> um, food for thought. I'll toss this out. Going back to the master plan um, under strategy five, and it, this is under alternative energy. And it says the um, strategic end to this that alternative energy technologies promoted and utilized to reduce energy costs, which the solar farm will, while not infringing on agricultural interests, establish view sheds, 
residential interests or the environment? So Sue, let me ask you about the agricultural interests. The individual that owns the agricultural land is not interested in farming it, but he's interested in putting a solar farm. So. Yeah, it's his, it's his land, his choice. Um, on the flip side, that if he still has cattle elsewhere, he's gonna have to buy, he'll have to secure his food for the animals from somewhere. But that's, so, that's, that's his choice. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, but zoning is in place to encourage certain uses. So. so basically it's or discourage and discourage other. Yeah, current usage generally is egg and based on the recommendation that goes to town board will be whether that zoning gets changed for different usage ultimately. So comments, Roy? No. <laughs> Anybody other comments? Uh, I mean, one of the comments I have really is, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about solar here, but you know, if if they if there is going to be some other use there, and the zoning changed it for that specific use, would people be in favor or not in favor of that? I don't know. Um, it, to me, this really comes back to the comprehensive plan. Now, obviously, perhaps they don't want to lead where things would be developed first, but I would think that that's generally what the co comprehensive plan is for. So um, as opposed to doing it piecemeal as, uh, as these things come up, you know, the idea of changing the zoning every, anytime somebody wanted to change it, I suppose that does get done, but is that really, uh, should, should that be being what is done now or should there be a review of the plan? So no, we, we've, we've, put a, we've, we've put a plan in place. We have a plan in place, right? We have well, a what I, what plan I'm, in place and we have a master plan in place. We just need to be involved in the administration of those plans that are already in place, not change those. That's a, a whole nother Well, discussion. I think Carl's argument but, is just being against overlays. Overlays are unpredictable. If you're, if you're living in the community, that overlay could just pop in and without any yes. forethought. And you're, you're, as a homeowner, you're, making decisions based on the zoning around your house. You may not want to buy a house if the zoning is industrial and you're going to be contiguous. Well, I remind you though, Dan, that uh, a lot of the towns around here, including like Lafayette, for example, and even Casanova, they, uh, they allow these by special permit. There's no, not even a zoning change required. So oh, no, I'm not a lot. making, yeah, and I'm not making a stand. I was just to, trying to explain, I think, just helping Carl explain his position. But yeah, we, I mean, we put the, we put the overlay uh, zone in there to make it uh, to make the hurdle a little bit higher that they would have to get over, you know, to put a little bit more control into the process. So, um, well, it, it is they, in this case, I, I mean, I, I agree, Dan, you know, and it, it's unpredictable. And part of what this but this town board said, we're gonna do it by overlay. It's not a bad approach, um, but that's why there's so much discussion around it because it's like, hey, what is next door? What's reasonable? Well, given that then, Jamie, I would strongly advocate, you know, screening. You know, I think the sensitivity needs to be the view shed, which is the entire town, but, and, and, and equally with those that are most affected by it, the neighbors those contiguous to the property and those within that live within eyesight of it. it, it it's Especially an interesting, it, it's an interesting point though, because I, I, I certainly understand overlay because at the end of my little cul-de-sac here on Windy Hill Lane, Lockheed Martin tests their uh, radar and I can't see it from my house. The only thing I see is the $10 million radar trucks going down the road. But when you come from Casanova, down Route 20, 
you can see the white domes where they test the radar and the buildings and whatnot, um, which are in the view shed of anybody driving down Route 20, but I can't see it at the end of my street. So those neighbors that are against it, are they actually viewing the solar array if there's the correct screening or they just don't want it in their backyard? And those uh -huh. are... I think their complaint was that they thought that it would deteriorate their property values. And I guess the, you know, how much of an impact is enough to be an issue? I don't know. I mean, I was probably the question that every planning board or town board is always wrestling with, but I think that that was their complaint. I don't know. I don't remember the letter per perfectly. So I don't remember if they complained about the potential view shed or not. Um, but I, I, my only comment on that is that um, it's the argument made with all of planning is that it's going to affect my property values. And it's it's typically in the courts, it has not done well. The argument of my property value is going to change because they're building a funeral home down the street or my property value is going to change because they put up a uh, an airport or a windmill or a solar panel or whatever. So the property values is, uh, that's a difficult one to argue from my perspective, because um, it's, it, we really don't understand, you know, uh, by the, house, the only, the but, only difference on this, on this one, Kevin, is it is currently not an allowed use. So we're, what this board is de deciding, not this board, but in re recommendation, whether this is going to be an allowed use. What do you mean it's currently not allow, an allowed use? We do it's have not an a, allowed use. It is not an allowed it. use until it, the zone gets changed. Until, until the, until the zone gets changed, but, but we've put a program in place to allow it to happen. Right, That's but, why we're talking but, tonight. I mean, if it, yes. was, if it was just the zoning doesn't allow, you know, you can't, you can't build solar panels in Pompey. That would be different than the fact that we put a program together to say, Let's figure out how we're going to allow solar farms. And so we, we put together a program that says we can review it and we can essentially allow it. But what you're saying, Jamie, is if it's not allowed use, why are we even talking tonight? No, 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 no. I was just, I think I was just going to piggyback in on your example of property values and all of that. People tend to argue that in court when they're saying, but yeah, it's allowed here. So I don't want to hear about your property values. Correct. We're in a, we're in a position where it is not allowed. We're in a position though that we we can allow it though. Well, correct. We have By we have a rule change. that says if <laughs> if it's fifty percent and it you know view shed and all of those things we can mm -hmm. allow it and then the people that say you know it diminishes my property value don't have an argument. If if we go to the board and say uh, we think this is a good use of that piece of property, correct, correct. If that's the, if in the first instance that's determined, then all the rest of it comes right, in. Right, right. Find me a homeowner that wants Lockheed Martin at the end of their street, a landfill at the end of their street, a 7-Eleven at the end of their street, a solar panel at the end of the street. You're not going to find many homeowners that are going to embrace those. But they all have cell phones. They all use power. They all uh, make waste to put in the landfill. It's just the whole NIMBY thing. I want all this, but not in my backyard. Put right. in somebody else's so, backyard. Right. So they the, the, the property value things overused all the time. But what I would use as an example, I think one of the best examples is Wegmans and DeWitt and how they fought that. And the neighbors fought it. There's going to be property values. There's going to be traffic. And I would argue now that if you tried to take Wegmans away, there'd be a riot. <laughs> and nobody's property values were affected. And all the... And the applicant was able to overcome all the objections through screening, through various means to accommodate and to slide into that space and, and, and mitigate any impact on the neighbors. They're screening which, at Wegmans? I can see that from miles away. I know yeah, exactly no, where it is. is. Well, there's not there a view is. shot. That neighborhood. So media neighbors. So. The berms and the evergreen trees. Those are huge yeah. burns to hide weapons. Oh, yeah. from they the put a lot in there. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I drive that every day of my last 
35 years and I can't see Wegmans when I drive by it. I really it's well, it's the property. It's the properties that are near it. One of my Edward, friends is right there, and they did a lot of work to. Uh, I, I, um, I, I get that. Yeah. I, I I get that. But also, where it's located is a little different than Pompey, on that stretch of road. Wegmans is not the only business on that stretch of road. Exactly, but there's right. not a whole, there's case, not solar panel uh, farms all the way across the road either. This is new. No, so. and I will tell you that the 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 new. Uh, cell tower they put in the Linden Corners golf course, you can't tell that that's not a real tree. Yeah. <laughs> You're stuck in traffic or not, Kevin. <laughs> I go there every day. And, and, and I get it, but we can do what Wegmans did and we can put up the berms and the screening and so on and so forth. Well, this planning board, that is what ultimately our job and task will be, I think, is to do the best we can to make it fit into that parcel. Right. And I mean, I would point out that the law, um, I presume you guys have read the law, but uh, we've already set the stage for that. I mean, there's specific requirements for screening, uh, the type of vegetation that's to be used, uh, the, uh, how, you know, how high it needs to be to be able to, you know, go 25% over the height of the array within two years of planting. Um, so all that's already been, that's already in the law. It's up to us then once it comes to the board to figure out how that's going to work, but, uh, and to get more specific about it, but, uh, um, we're not starting scratch this is what i we wouldn't be starting from scratch is what i'm trying to emphasize uh, it would it would have been my preference that uh you know if if i would i guess if i was on the town board my, my preference would be that we determine where these type of properties would be and delay that out up front as opposed to doing it ad hoc as the properties come along you know just like you know you wouldn't necessarily want to put in an industrial park zone by zone you know, you'd want to, you know, we've talked a lot about where the zone should be uh, for various properties and whether we should extend uh, the industrial areas and stuff like that. And to do something like this, just uh, ad hoc out of, out of the uh, blue on a property by property basis and, and by changing zoning, I just, uh, it doesn't sound to me like a lot of planning. No, Carl, 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 uh, excuse me, but we have spent... John, I'm just going to throw out two years planning mm -hmm. for solar to come into our community. It's not ad hoc. We made a set of rules that if okay. that property that's applying, that applicant is applying, uh, if they meet those requirements, we can allow it in that area. This is not an ad hoc thing. We, we, we didn't just decide that, you know, when somebody comes forward and says we want a, a solar panel, we we I don't know if you've read the solar uh, program that that we put together, but it very specifically says where it can be, what the requirements are, and and so so people can apply for it. Uh, so uh, no, it's, it's not ad hoc. And in, in fact, nothing we do is ad hoc. If I say I want to build a house someplace. Yes, we have to decide how far the house has to be from the road, how far it has to be from the neighbors, where the septic has to be, where the driveway has to be in, in each house. We don't say, uh, you know, you can only build a house here in this spot. So, no, we don't do anything ad hoc. We have rules. We're just enforcing them. But, but on a house by house basis, you're not changing the application of zoning. You know, so to me, my my preference would be you guys, yes, you I think that a lot of the I think yes, that a lot are. of them. Yes, you are. If I want to build a house, just like the, the, the bed and breakfast that's down on Route 20, uh, that's too close to the road, that has a silo they want to use, that's too close to the road, we made changes. So, yes, each property we do property by property. Absolutely. So you're saying every property we rezone and, and the property. I, I don't, I don't think that that's the case. All the neighbor's concerns. If there are concerns. 
Right, but we're not we're not changing like industrial to residential and residential to industrial every time a a, a property comes along. We we're not generally no, but doing that's that. Not, that's not a. I don't think that's a a reasonable way to look at this, Carl. I mean, it's a means to an end as far as the overlay district. It's not like we're rezoning it to put a factory in there, an Amazon warehouse or something like that. It's uh it's the process that we came up with, and as far as talking about the comprehensive plan and uh, figuring out where these could go, we took all that into account when we wrote the solar law. I mean, we've only got three-phase power along certain sections of Route 20, Sweet Road, Pompey Center Road, or in Delphi Road. Um, there's, there's a very limited number of areas where these could go in the first place. Uh, I, I'm in agreement. What, I, what I'm saying is my preference would be, given the rules that were created, is that those areas would be designated, you know, up front, because then there would be, you know, it'd be a lot more clear on what the plan would be and where these permissible places would be. And right now, I would say that the public wouldn't necessarily know where those uh, uh, solar farms or whatever could be put. You know, and, and we I, I'm more, I'm that, talking... Well, we, we designated what? that. We we actually did designate where they can be. They can be in fifty percent of uh, the arable land or tillable land or whatever the the ag and markets. The, so so if you look the, at the maps and you look at the why? maps where where the three phase is, you'll know where it can go. And you then just have to meet the other requirements. It's, if it's all been defined, then why does zoning have to be changed every time one goes in? Because, because, what I'm saying because is, it was a way of giving the, the town board some power to be able to say we like be, the idea of this or we don't like the idea of this based on public input rather than just uh, having it a permitted use and uh, just automatically going to the planning board for approval. It was to okay. introduce an extra step so that, uh, again, so that they had more control over so they want so they wanted a lot more flexibility is what you're saying and to be right. able to just okay rather than like i said like lafayette for example you just got to get a special permit casanovia you just got to get a special permit um but it's an approved use so i guess that the question is and and it's been quite a robust discussion <laughs> um we can I, I'm, I'm hearing, I, I have a, a sense, you know, I, I think we lost Roy um, um, somewhere. I don't see him on here anymore. Um, so we, we're supposed to deliver basically a report um, and I, I don't know, I, I, I hear Carl, he did, hasn't seemed too keen on it. It sounds like Sue's not so keen on the recommendation. Um, I hear John and Dan and Kevin probably, you know, yes, with some, you know, caveats. How can we come to um, a recommendation? Can we do it tonight verbally? Um, can we add in concerns about what, you know, maybe what I'll call minority or dissenters might think? in a reasonable way, or shall we try to draft something and do people understand where I'm going with this? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think in general, my issue is really the process and it not being clear to the public up front on what's going on. Because I think right now, I mean, people know where houses are going to go. They know where businesses are going to be. And I don't think the general public would necessarily know where solar farms are going to be. You know, that's my primary issue. Do I, do I think I, I think that the, the, uh, all the stuff that we talked about that uh, was put together, I think was well done. It just would seem to me that it would be more appropriate for the town to uh, be more upfront about what's happening instead of it being ad hoc. Um, to me, it's ad hoc because like I said, is right now, you know, where residential goes, you know, where industrial goes, uh, you know, something like this is to me less clear. I mean, the, the rules give you a way to get there, but it's, uh, you know, not the way I, I think it's, 
that I would have done it if it was me. Given the rules that we're there and the criterion we're looking at right now, Carl, are you um, thinking that you would say this would be inappropriate or would not be an appropriate area um, uh, I, for, for the recommendation? I think that what I would say is if I was the town of town, I could go either way on what we would do. Okay. I think the real issue is, is how, uh, to, by doing this in the fashion that it's laid out so that, uh, you know, that we would do, we would potentially do a zoning change every time somebody wanted to put one in to me, that's not really uh, the ideal way to do it. I think that's the biggest complaint that I have. Yeah. But Carl, that's how we put Lockheed Martin at the end of my street. That's how we put the antennas up on Sevier road. That that's how we do it. That's, that's how the, well, the rules work. Well, well I, I get that. Carl, too, that you're probably talking about maybe a handful of these um, as time goes on. Yeah, I, I, mean, I see. It's not like you're going like to get one a week or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because there will be a limitation. And also, I mean, as far as where they go, you just need to look at three phase infrastructure and uh, look at the rest of the criteria in the law. It's a 10 acre minimum site. Yeah. Um, the setbacks, so, you know. So let me, let me ask. Let me ask you another question. If, uh, if, if National Grid or whomever wanted to come in and put in another set of transformers in a particular area, what, what would happen with that? Obviously that would be, uh, obviously what kind of review process would that go through and how does that relate to, uh, what's put in for that you're talking about for solar and renewables as it is, are they, to me, that seems like they're, they're two separate processes. Carl, the uh, Ni Niagara Mohawk falls under a whole different set of laws and regulations, and it would not yeah. come before this board. It would not come before the town board. They have right of ways, and that's that's a whole different level of uh, approval for that sort of infrastructure. If National Grid decides they want to put a three phase on another part of the road, it's actually happening up on my road because we need more power down at Lockheed Martin. It doesn't come before these boards. It's it's a, just a different level of um, okay. approval. But they I mean, would, if they were going to put a new substation in or something like that, I would think it would come before. It could potentially come before us. But I'm not. A brand I, new Jamie, Jamie would have to rule on that, but I don't think so. Under the um, the uh, what's what's the term I'm looking? The Utilities Commission. Uh, I, I think that's a federal thing, John. I don't think you can kind of get in the way of that. Public if they wanted to come in and expand or whatever. Yeah, Public Service Commission, yeah. that's yeah. a whole different level. Yep. Like those high transmission lines, if they figure they're gonna go through your property, they're gonna go through your property. That's so. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's not anything that, that this planning board would even, uh, they wouldn't even call us, it would just be so let me ask a question in, in a, uh, another way. Is there any place where you would not permit a solar array? Well, I'd have a hard, you know, I think other sites would be more difficult, as I indicated in the last meeting. Certainly along 20 would be more sensitive. Um, in my mind, uh, some areas up on uh, Pompey Center Road, uh, just from the standpoint of some of those vistas, um, or in Delphi Road, you would have a very difficult time screening uh, if you tried to put them on that ridge on the uh, east side or on the west side of Warren Delphi Road. And uh, the east side of Warren Delphi Road is primarily wetland. So, yeah. um, you know, so you, you, you start narrowing it down very quickly, in my mind. And, uh, uh, just based on where, again, where three-phase infrastructure is and where screening is, is possible, you know, where it's feasible. Okay. Yeah, because I think it's important to, uh, 
you know, if the, if the criteria that were put forward on, on, uh, uh, putting in a solar farm are are uh, valid then that means that there would be places where you would not approve it so mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. okay otherwise they're not really valid uh, criteria so all right um i i don't i i think the primary issue as i said is i don't necessarily think that the the, the methodology to do this was the best. I think the details that were put together, I think were done very well, but uh, you know, you know, based on, you know, the, uh, my, my biggest concern is that, that the public should be uh, more aware of the potential for where these uh, farms could go. And I think that based on where it is right now, it's just less clear. That's, that's my primary issue. Uh, does that mean I would say, no, this is not a permissible use here? Uh, I think I'm more in favor of it than not. You know, I think that we could work on a, uh, a recommendation either way, but um, I, I certainly don't like, you know, for something that's permissible to be done on a property, you know, I don't generally like to tell somebody that they can't do it especially if it doesn't have large impacts on their neighbors. And I, I think that the discussion that we've been having here is really about whether or not, well, many things, but one of those things is how, how much impact it's going to have on the neighbors. I think that uh, John had talked about the fact that when he did his property walk, it looked to him like it would not necessarily be visible by those that were on the road and whether or not it would be viewable by other locations, I don't know. But, uh, well, I said that uh, there was already some screening on the road that could be supplemented with additional yeah. screen. Um, so, and that the neighbors, uh, I felt that the neighbor issue was surmountable. It was po it was possible to do screening through vegetation, berms, whatever that would uh, make it so that the neighbors would not be able to see it. I think the, two that, are there. the the true viewshed analysis, I think that this goes to the town board that if Gordon's company does the true viewshed analysis, you'll have a truer representation then on the viewshed. Um, we have to remember mm -hmm. this recommendation to the town board and then they're the ones that will have to have a public hearing and hopefully well advertised and people, that's their chance to really reach out and make publicly known what their comments and thoughts are on the proposed zone change then. Um, the, a couple have reached out and that they are the immediate neighbors um, in terms of public hearing, then um, I know some people were have commented that they didn't realize that there was a local law change um, due to COVID, whatever, the timing that did, a lot of work went into it. Um, some people just aren't aware of it. And then the first time it goes through that I'm sure that there'll be people and people will be before be for it and some will speak against it and their comments and thoughts will become very evident at that point. Um, I agree with some of um, the question that Carl asked that it, if, if not here, then where, or if not here, then where, um, definitely on that and probably then a better guidance of with a problem, with an evaluation of the recommendation to go forward would definitely be helpful. Um, but I, I, Sue, I disagree. I, I, it, because we can't write zoning that tells everybody exactly where to build their house. And it, 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 it's, no. we, we write a set of rules and then people put an application in according to the rules. And yep. if it fits the rules and that then we rule on it, but I can't say this is the only place you can put a solar farm is 
on 3257 Orin Delphi Road. I, I just don't think we have the ability no. to do that. I didn't mean that. I meant in terms of looking at the qualities that we're supposed to look to and, and compare to. That was the question, not a specific area, not like in years gone by that you had the tower overlay zone. We don't have that anymore. You look at an individual location for the cell tower. It, things have changed. Pompey has kept up with that, yes. We seem to have lost Roy somewhere along the way. <laughs> He's got to put his chickens to bed. Um, <laughs> Do you want to try to formulate something with these thoughts? I, I did I did write some things down. Um, it, it, you know, right? It's been a it's been a long discussion, and may I just make a couple of quick points that I think are are relevant to the discussion. Go ahead, Gordon. Sure. Thanks. So I, I you know, understand the change in use is a concern and why this, well, we are talking about a lengthy presence on the site. It isn't a permanent conversion and, and we are bound, assuming things move ahead by the town's law, which requires a decommissioning security, ensuring that the project's gonna get removed. And in the meantime, it's, you know, we, we specify sheep grazing, we specify uh, native pollinator friendly habitat. And as far as protecting far farmland in the long run, you know, when this thing gets removed, that farmland is gonna be as healthy as, as it's ever been. Uh, and so I, I think in some ways it can be supportive of ag interests, you know, it can help the landowner keep the property in a relatively natural state that when the time comes can be returned to to farming or whatever is appropriate in, in the, the future. The last thing is, is just as far as the locational aspect, John's right. I mean, he's talked about, you know, the three the limitation to the three phase lines. I mean, we're talking about 20 acres out of, I think if you use that ballpark, 75% of prime farmland, we're talking about 20 acres out of, you know, roughly 40,000 acres in the town of Pompey. And there's also that provision that, you know, this is going to be, no, nothing closer than a mile. You've got this site, the town says no more solar farms within a mile radius of that particular location. So I think you've done, the town law anyway, has done a good job of, of making provisions to limit density to kind of control where these things go. And I think, I think it's a workable solution and the vegetative screen, some of the stuff we talked about to protect you should, I think that's all manageable. I appreciate you letting me make a comment. Yeah, question for you, Gordon. Um, it, you say about removing it and then being just as um, good soil, healthy soil when it's done. Have you had any in for any length of time and already removed it at this point? Not, not that long, no, not, to, not 25 years, no. Okay. So, well, I think we're at a point that We've discussed enough. We've voiced a lot um, and input in that. I wish Roy was on here, but we lost him for the evening. I know he had problems earlier with connections. So, um, what I would say in general is, is given the discussion we had is um, I'm, I'm not against putting the, uh, I think this is not a bad place to have it necessarily. My preference would be is that I think the way the process is going to be done is the public ideally, which is one of the reasons you have a comprehensive plan would be more aware of where these um, farms could potentially be. And so, you know, if we put something together that uh, recommended this or thought that this was not a, um, or thought that this was a, 
uh, a decent place to put the proper to put the uh, farm is I really think that there needs to be an evaluation on the criteria that they have them in the order that they have them uh, to make the uh, priorities more clear. But more importantly, I think is to identify the areas where these potentially could go so that the public is not you know, uh, I don't know if blindside is the right word, but, you know, it's finding out on a piecemeal by piecemeal basis on where these properties would go. Now, now maybe that's the way the town really wants it to be, but uh, that's, uh, you know, I wasn't involved in putting a comprehensive plan together, so I don't know necessarily if that's what they wanted or did not want. Um, I understand the idea of flexibility, but generally from, our, our training is, is you don't want to be changing zoning every time something's happening. Now, obviously, these are relatively specialized, uh, you know, so th there's a lot of pros and cons either way. But it would be, in my opinion, it would be better for the public to have, a, uh, uh, have more clarity on where these potential uh, farms could potentially go, especially since they may affect their properties or potentially may impact where property or housing or whatever gets built. So Carl, you think that if we identify locations uh, that they can be built, those neighbors, because there's people that live throughout the town, uh, will just ignore those sp specific neighbors because the other neighbors didn't want it built there. I, I just don't see that we can identify places it's just like the previous application we can't really tell them where to put their boundary line that's their job so if we say if you want a solar farm you can only put it in carl's backyard can't put it anywhere no, else in town but but we certainly know where the the three-phase power that, is that's that's called euclidean zoning and that's how zoning most in onondaga county is done you pick your area, you decide what's going to go there. That's how it happens. So I know okay. but that's, it happens that way, but. But it's still not, within, with, this, this within, is a more flexible way of zoning. It's like right. a within, within that, Jamie, but to get to that point in Onondaga County, they have meetings and hearings and discussions and they vote in people that are on boards and, and, and they come up with those. They don't just do it haphazardly yeah no by onondaga county i mean that all the towns in onondaga county do do this type of zoning which is here's your zone here's what goes in it but this is but so but then but then every one of those towns has a zoning board of appeals and so you can well, go into that town and say i i want to do this and you go in front of the zoning town uh, the, the board of appeals and you say i want to change the zoning because i want to do this and all those towns have allowed those changes correct no Don't that's what keeps that. you in that's, that's what keeps different. you in business but that's a whole different philosophical discussion but but, but that's I'm what keeps you in that... business jamie is, <laughs> is i can go into a town that says you can't build this here and i can appeal that and i may win that appeal i'll have a different discussion with you about that but not true that would be a use variance. So, and, and we do that in this town. We have use variances in this uh, town. Uh, that would be very interesting to me. It's very rarely done. But anyway, that's off the point. But I would love yeah. to have that discussion with you, Kevin, as always. As always. <laughs> Another point in time. So, but no, I get I get what Carl is saying. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I also get that people have, have really worked hard on this legislation and, and even people like that. Yes. Here. Yeah, so I, think, I think what was written was very comprehensive. I don't want to have people think that I don't uh, appreciate the hard work that went into it and the details that went into it. I think that was done very, very well. My, my primary point is all that work was done and that information could have been used, in my opinion, to... Uh, identify more clearly where these type of properties would be. And Carl, you were on the planning board during the time that the solar committee met and had public hearings. Where were you during those public hearings? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember <laughs> if I was in the meeting or not. But uh, I, I know I was in uh, some discussions of them, but uh, I, I was not part of who drew up, you know, the rules and things like that, that, that you guys had done. 
And that's no, the other no, thing. absolutely not. But you could have yeah. provided input, and you could have yeah. been. And that's the other thing I, I will, will say with with Jamie is zoning, planning, rules, laws, constitutions are written by people that show up to the meetings yeah. and are approved by the people that go to the meetings and vote in those people. So, Carl, to say that we put something together you don't agree with. You should have been there when we put it together. That's no, your no, no. I, no, I'm not saying that I disagree with the rules that you decided. What I have an issue with is what the town did with it is to me, I think the next step should have been done is to identify where those areas would be, just like you do with industrial or anything else that was done. I mean, we've talked about hamlets, I don't know how many times in, uh, in these meetings. You know, those are established. We've talked about whether they should be expanded or not expanded. You know, a lot of discussion was was done about uh, those type of things. And so I think that with all the work that was done, it seems to me that the town should have done more with what was presented. But maybe they maybe this is the way that they wanted it done. I don't know. It's too late for that, Carl, because well, the decision is. was it made. It was voted on. Done. But, it okay. Right. Hey, the, the town guys, it. Gentlemen, we can agree agree to disagree at this point this is the law that we have um mm -hmm. we know pretty much it's limited within the town currently where the three phase wiring is currently available and i guess we could go back to it depends if the stream changes later then that area may change with it depending if three phase gets added but currently any solar farm proposition is going to be near where that three phase wiring currently exists. So we have to rely on at this point, if it gets, to, regardless of the recommendation, if it gets to a public hearing at the town board level, that's where the locals have to come in and make their concerns or opinions known. And the town board will have to deal with what they bring forward at that point. So, um, yes, a lot of hard work went into it, and it is what it is right now. So we need to wrap up, make a recommendation to the town board, and let them take it from here. So um, wrapping it up. So All right. um, said I can make a motion. And after a discussion, we've heard a lot of opinions. Um, my motion would be to not recommend based on what we were given in the, um, as given in the local law, what's given in our master plan and what's in egg and markets, interpretations of protecting farm prime egg land, the scenic view shed, which is delineated in our master plan, uh, preservation of open space and the compatible use with nearby residences. Um, so I'd make a motion based on those for not recommending. I, I would second that motion. Uh, I, I, I would make it another motion. Um, and well, and first, my... first we have a motion and a second. Oh, okay, good. All right. So Based on that, we have to go through and vote, and we'll see where that goes from there. Um, thanks for coming back, Roy. Mary Beth, can you do a roll call, please? Uh, but but Sue, isn't there discussion? discussion? Is, is, there's a motion, right. but there's there's discussion when there's a motion put forward. Correct. Okay. There, did you, did Roy hear the motion? I don't think he was on at the time of the motion. Yeah. Right. Doesn't look like he has any uh, audio. Can't hear you, Roy or Carol. I, I see no microphone showing on the screen for him, so I don't think he has audio. While we're waiting for Roy's audio, I understand that a motion is made, a second to the motion, and then we ask for discussion before a vote. Right, but you can't. I, I know, I can't make another motion, but I can ask for discussion before the vote and you ask for a vote. 
Yeah, my bad discussion. Or right, we're trying to wait for Roy here for Let, let's wait for Roy. I wonder I, if Roy if Roy can hear us or not. Roy, can Roy, you give us a thumbs up? Can you hear us, Roy? Usually you can text or something or uh type something yeah. into a chat or something. Yeah, yeah. So, just, just some commentary, I guess, is that the issue I have is, as she read, that's what was, uh, that, that's what the current priorities are that are set up. I think that based on a discussion we had is I think that, um, um, that this process potentially is a, an approvable process, but their priorities are not really laid out the way in the order that they should be laid out. Kevin, you're muted talking. So, so how should that, uh, I don't understand, Carl, how should that uh, dictate a non-recommendation? Well, it really, it goes, it goes back into, um, well, it really goes back into what I thought it should have been done. I think the process to which they had put it together, the, the zoning should have come first. In other words, finish the plan. But, you know, I do I think that uh, things can be mitigated? Probably. But really, you know, that hearing should be had before somebody made a recommendation either way, in my view. Carl, I think the Second Amendment should have been re-looked at back in the 1700s. But we've done this, Carl. This has been done. We can't say, I'm going to make a recommendation. Oh no! Did we just lose Kevin? Kevin, yeah, you're not, wrong. Carl, I'm it's not quite done. Sure it's been voted on. Right. I mean, I I don't know what you're talking about as far as the process, Carl. Um, you said something about a hearing, and um, I mean, there were six months of hearing related to this law. Um, before it was finally passed by the town board. So, and there were comments from the public, there were changes made as a result of comments from the public. Um, so I'm not quite sure where you're coming from, I guess. Okay. All, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, is, what are you saying, Sue? I was just gonna try to bring it back to discussion on the actual motion not what did or didn't happen um in getting to the law so. uh, not my dog <laughs> yeah I, that's my dog right oh. and <laughs> I, i've kept my dog so <clears throat> so it sounds like uh the other board members are saying that the the uh criteria used in this motion are not valid it's it, basically i'm looking at there's a motion in a second there's discussion on it and then vote if it goes forward fine if it doesn't then we go from there just we've we're spinning wheels now so yeah let's get I, carl i don't know what you're talking about but i want a discussion on the motion i i understand the motion sue you said that ag and markets um said you, you made a statement about ag and markets in your motion but we made a decision that within ag and markets we were allowing 50 percent of the proposed land to be set aside for arable land and 50 percent can be used for solar farms so i think your motion makes it sound like ag and markets say that you got to use the whole property for farming and that's not what ag and that's not what our law says or our our uh it's not a law but it's our solar whatever you call it john um, it, it is, is a law it is a local law. law all right so it's the law so the law doesn't say that all the property has to be in accordance with ag and markets it says that 50 percent of the property can be used for solar
Actually, Kevin, it's the criterion. One of the criterion is what is looking at the uh, whether it's it's farmable land. I think that's what Sue was saying. That's a criteria. Yep, but for this board right now. For this board, but Sue made a motion that said Ag and Market says that it has to be used for farming, and I think that's. I don't think that's. I don't think that's what she said. I get the fifty percent. Also, that in the local law it refers to us to egg and markets, and within egg and markets, there's siding goals that you should avoid the installation of solar rays, arrays on the most valuable or productive farmland. The following is the order of importance for any solar array avoidance, and right off the bat, comprise the farm prime farmland soils. Etc. and on down, down through. So that's where my statement there. I understand the fifty percent. Okay, fair enough. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none because this is for um, a not recommendation. A yes vote means a not recommending. So Mary Beth, can you go through and roll call? I'll, I'll start with a yes. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the beginning here. Carl? Yes. John? No. Kevin? You're no. on mute, Kevin. I know. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm unmuting. No. Okay. How many votes do I get? <laughs> One. <laughs> Roy, can he talk? Are you saying yes or no? Yes. Okay. Got it. Yes. <laughs> and Dan. Yes. Yes. Okay. Or yeses, two noes. So based on that, motion is approved to not recommend the tier three solar submitted by Pivot Energy on Sweet Road. This recommendation. Hey, so may yes. I um may I recommend because this is this is a recommendation and there was a, quite a bit of dissent if yep. if um the the dissenting people want to um, make a, some statement that will also go to the town board. I think that would be important. That's up to the chair. That's fine. So is that just a that's fine or no? The, <laughs> the, the dissenting ones, the ones that voted no, versus correct. Okay, so. I'm fine. The motion with that. carried for a non recommendation. Right. Correct. Yes. Anyone or the two misunderstands that. Right. Is it like the Supreme Court? Can I get my clerk to write my uh, dissent? Um, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's can, your clerk? <laughs> but John, you want... John Shaheen, actually, my wife, Alexandra. But is it something we can write and put in the record, or do we have to throw it out tonight? I, I if I think it would be appropriate to um, to make a statement, uh, probably on the record tonight, Kevin. Okay, John, you can go first. All right. Well, um, as I've indicated before, um, my sense is that uh, the local law allows use of prime farmland. Um, as long as they meet the criteria in the law, 
And uh, so I don't see that as an issue. Um, the land was previously essentially scrub that was cleared and now is utilized for growing hay. Um, from a view shed standpoint, uh, as I've said before, um, I would rely on a view shed analysis, um, which would happen at the overlay district hearing uh, part of the process. But uh, my observations were that the view shed um, concerns are addressable and uh, it's doable, in other words. So uh, I'm not in a position to, both from a view shed standpoint and from a soil standpoint, um, say that this uh, should not get a positive recommendation to move forward to the town board. My turn. Yes, Kevin. Still, okay, yeah. ready or are you still writing? I'm still writing, but yeah. Uh, Kevin Corson, one of the dissenters. Uh, it's my belief that the applicant has met the requirements for the solar law written by and approved by the town board of the town of Pompey. Um, and uh, part of that requirement is that uh, they have land that if it is arable land, they can only use 50% of that land. The applicant has 80 acres and is requesting 20 acres to be used for a solar farm that meets the requirements of our local law and will be able to be uh, shielded and work within the requirements of that law. Period. You didn't need a clerk. <laughs> <laughs> I only remembered my shorthand from too many years ago. <laughs> That was it, Kevin. That's it. That's all okay. I needed. They, they met the requirements of the law. Yep, period. Okay. <laughs> period. Okay. Just make sure that's clear in the event of an Article 78. I want to have my stuff clear. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is recorded. Mary Beth is scribbling. We need help. I think I got. Most of that also, Mary Beth. Okay. So. so, next step, we got to write a, actually write it, Jamie. I don't or, think so. I think it's, I think what we're sending is fine as it is. Unless you want to add anything, Sue. Um, yeah. The only thing I would add, I, 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 the letter that you've written, I think, is fine. But I would add the two dissensions it's, comments. Yeah, that was my thought on that. It's. Oh, I closed that one. Uh, So the, the draft recommendation is what you want sent, Sue, with the with the dissenting opinions. Um, essentially, I think there. Um, I believe so. At the end to add, yeah. 
Mary Beth, you'll you'll listen to it, right? Those last oh, yes. the sentence. Oh, yes. We'll try to we'll try to get a word for word of those. Yes. Okay. Yes. I think that's important. Thank you. Me too. Usually I we don't do a word for word, as you know. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. Sure Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I thank everybody. It's a long process. It is new to everybody. Um, I think, at least on this part, there's probably some things that we all either learned or learn can learn from or make suggestions how to streamline it and answer some of our other questions right off the bat also. Um, other than that, I do have a question and meeting night. Um, traditionally, planning board has been always on the third Monday of the month. Um, just kind of feeling people out because we tend to meet more than the zoning board and possibly a chance to switch meeting nights with the planning board. So instead of the third Monday, which always creates problems for us right off the bat in the beginning of the year of January, it does work for Jamie. Um, federal holidays, that's the issue. So, because Martin Luther King holiday followed by presidents on the first two meeting months Jamie, you're shaking your head. You're not available. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to come up with the, the yeah, I have a problem because I have, I, I have a, a the other Mondays I've got on um, yeah. last planning board. Okay. Okay. Um, we could possibly do as long as we we set it up in advance, we can make an arrangement for a different day. Is that the problem that we're that we're missing meetings? Well, or what do we do? What's the problem? When we, we always have the the issue, of different people from the public have commented that when we have a an agenda and it falls on the federal holiday, what are you doing? Yeah. Have a public meeting on a federal holiday, and that knocks affects January and February to start the year. Is today a federal holiday? Did I miss it? <laughs> it it's still December. We're trying to plan ahead. <laughs> but it, no matter what day we do it, there's going to be something that might interfere. I, I, it's been the third Monday for how long? I know, ever since I've been on this. But <laughs> so, what's the specific reason, Sue? Have you got like something berries to pick or something on that day or? Yeah. But have a lot of people complained no. about it or is it? A... it, it... Over, over the years, there's been enough, but that's again, food for thought. Always we just go with it and you're on, you know, is it legality that still continue holding the public meetings on those holidays? Yeah, you can have your, you can have your meetings. It's not. That's actually helpful to me because I have other meetings and when there's federal holidays, it means I don't have conflicts in meetings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I, I didn't make the last meeting because I forgot. Oh. <laughs> we were worried about you. We're like, he always comes. Where is he? That's weird. Okay. So, it happens. He, he, was, happens. he was preparing his turkey. So, okay. All right. We'll stay with the third Monday and go with it then. So um, that's all I had tonight. So motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Motion to adjourn. And second. second. I saw Dan raise his thumb first, so I'm gonna oh, give it a so second. Everybody in um yeah, in agreement, say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yep. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, all.